The Isaiah Factor Uncensored starts right now. And welcome to The Factor Uncensored. The country of Haiti is observing two weeks of mourning after the assassination of their president, Jovenel Moise. He was murdered at his own home in an attack Wednesday. His wife, First Lady Martine Moise, was also wounded. It was disturbing news for an already embattled island nation in the Americas. Tonight, the Haitian ambassador to the United States speaks exclusively to The Factor. Well, it's an honor. We have the Haitian ambassador to the United States, Ambassador Boshid Edmond, Your Excellency, glad to have you here on The Factor Uncensored. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Obviously, a very tough time in your country. What do we know now about the assassination of President Moïse there? Uh, so far, we have heard at least four individuals have been uh, killed, two others apprehended. Any additional new information, any updates so far? Oh, the only updates are how it's uh, now it's more than two in custody. Uh, now we have more four than almost four of them in custody, and four were killed. And uh, the manhunt continues because we believe more of them should have been probably they are still on the territory. We are hunting them down until we get them because the main objective is to get them and bring them to justice because we need to know what exactly happened, who sent them, who paid them, or for whom they are working. It could only be speculation now, but what do you think, or have you heard what the possible motive for this assassination of President Moise was? Yeah, as you as you you said, uh, it's only a matter of speculation. I just don't want to speculate. Uh, I would prefer to wait. The result of the investigation of the national police, uh, which which is still ongoing, and therefore I just don't want to to speculate or to go here over. Uh, the, the current investigation. But uh, we do hope, we do believe, the result of the investigation will reveal the details of exactly what occurred. Now, the First Lady was injured. She was transported to the United States where she is hospitalized. Have you had a chance to talk to her? And how is she doing? I haven't talked to her yet, but I spoke to other people uh, next to her. And uh, she's uh, making little progress, bit by bit. Uh, but I understand that uh, she's coming a long way. Uh, so we will still continue to pray for her for a speed recovery. And back to the suspects and the uh, assassins in this case, uh, it's my understanding that they uh, spoke Spanish and English, English with an American accent and pretended to be the DEA. Is all of that accurate? Yes, uh, it's that accurate. Uh, uh, some of them are speaking in Spanish, some of them are speaking English, but uh, we do believe that they use the, the, the DEA thing as a way to mask the, 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 the assassination. Uh, but they were not the agents, uh, they were fake, and they, they, they just use it as a way to, to, you know, to hide what they came to do. Do you think there is an international element to this? Uh, obviously, you guys uh, in Haiti, uh, the language there is, is fr uh, French, and we have these individuals speaking Spanish with an American English accent. Uh, I mean, it's a matter of, uh, that's one of the reasons we understand that uh, because some of those uh, missionaries, or not all, or if not all of them, were foreign nationals. Therefore, this is one of the reasons we request uh, from different countries, the international community, uh, assistance in terms of investigating, uh, you know, to, to, to know, to use the expertise so we can, uh, uh, you know, we can dig deeper and to make sure that no stone is left unturned. So therefore, uh, of course, there is an international limit because of the nationalities. So now we are working on that to make sure that we identify them uh, those who were killed and those who are in custody. Has the international community come to your aid to provide you the assistance that you need? I know President Biden here in the United States called it a heinous act. Um, are other countries coming forward? Is, it, is the United States coming forward to provide you with the assistance, uh, manpower you need to hunt uh, the remaining individuals, if there are other individuals out there and to figure out the plot? Or can you guys handle it yourself? 
uh, we, as a matter of fact, we started already national investigation. But that's, we requested assistance from the United States, from other countries, uh, to see how they can use, they can put their expertise, our, our service, so we can continue with our own investigation we started already, and to, exp to probably to expand it uh, outside of Haiti, uh, so we can be able to trace uh, the money, uh, those who are involved, and so on. So it's a matter of process. Since uh, the incident occurred yesterday, and we officially made the request, now we are waiting for the for the response of the, of the American authorities. Ambassador, it's my understanding you talked to the president as recent as Monday, right? And and what was that conversation like? Uh, you know, as always, very uh, adamant, uh, talking about uh, what he achieved today and talking about uh, what he wants to do before he leaves, uh, trying to see if he can accomplish something that is started before he leaves power on February 7th. And we talk about the elections, the referendum, the process. And we talk about, uh, you, know, the, you know, some other issues regarding economy and investment and so on. So we always have a very lively conversation because uh, uh, whenever the president is talking to, he loves talking to, to people and talking about what he sees, how he sees the country, how, what he wants to achieve. So, uh, you know, that was, uh, unfortunately, that was my last conversation with him. I have never expected that uh, that could have ended that way. I believe some, as a human being, anything could have happened to us, but not that cruel death. Up next here on The Factor, our conversation continues with the ambassador. We address the elephant in the room. Why wouldn't President Moise step down when his term was officially over before his assassination? We'll be back with more Factor in just a moment. And welcome back to the Factor on Censor. Tonight we are talking to the Haitian ambassador of the United to the United States, Boshit Edmund, about the assassination of the country's president. We address the future of elections and what kind of help the ambassador hopes to see from the international community. Ambassador, before the president died or was assassinated, he was a subject of protest because he was in office by decree. Uh, many people said he should have been out of office in February. Will you move forward with elections in your country or will that be on hold for now? No, no, we'll move forward because that was the one of the wishes of the president to hold elections and to be replaced by an elected president. That's what he wanted to do. Therefore, we need to move forward. And uh, the other issues if we, we, regarding uh, the, the legitimacy of the term of the president, we are not going to discuss that because we know we, we, we had enough argument on that and the international community recognized uh, president was the only legitimate president. And uh, the, so therefore, now the most important thing is it's uh, to find a way more forward and we are determined to move forward. And we believe that one of the way to get at peace uh, that peaceful environment or that, uh, that stable country, politically stable country, needs to election. The president wanted to have elections. I believe to respect his wishes, we need to go forward. Claude Joseph is the interim president that's currently in place. Is he legitimately there? Is he the one who should be interim president right now in Haiti? Uh, uh, I think so. I think he's the one who's been uh, leading the interim government. Uh, but uh, so far, he's the one in charge, and he's the one that the international community is engaged with. And so, therefore, there is no discussion about it. There are a lot of issues, a lot of discontent, a lot of problems on the ground in Haiti. Do you guys need, as we've seen in the past, a stabilization force, stabilization force to come in, or you guys can run your country and you can handle it yourselves without having the international community or the UN coming in with peacekeepers. What's your thoughts on that? Uh, listen, as a Haitian citizen, uh, I will tell you, this is not uh, the best way to approach it because every Haitian uh, doesn't really like to see foreign troops on this territory. But on the other hand, it's very, there's a fragment reality. The national police is not uh, capable enough to carry out its duties because uh, they are overwhelmed. They are on the under equipped and the gangs they are fighting, they are more, they are even well armed than them. Because remember, those gangs are being fueled, are being 
you know, uh, fueled and paid by drug dealers, drug cartels. So it's very important for the national police to have means to strengthen itself and to get more training, more assist, technical assistance. Therefore, we'll be, uh, we will welcome any international assistance uh, to support the police and, and to help the police to be more efficient and securing the country. And so the citizen can back it to their daily activities. But uh, for now, we, I believe it's very important to have international assistance. But uh, the assistance can be technical. It can be, you know, or professional or training. Uh, so uh, we, it's a matter of, of for the experts to decide uh, what would be the best suited response in this context. And just FYI, Ambassador Edmund there was recently in Houston for an event thrown by the Haitian community here in our community.